Welcome to this Pots and Pad 101, the basics of Pots and Pad. What do I think after three years of teaching myself French cooking? What do I think about these things here? We're going to start with the pans. Well, if you want to know more, well, keep watching. Now, would you look at all these pans? They're a bit ugly and dirty. They've been using them. You see, they're not brand new because I'm actually cooking uh, in the kitchen. But when you start, it's so overwhelming, these pans. I mean, look at this. Just, just a selection of some of the things I've been using to just give you a, a bit of an idea and I'll do some comments about each. So let's start with the first one I see here. So this is the typical, in this different size, uh, the non-stick pan. Uh, you've been uh, using this usually for anything that sticks a lot. Mostly for me, I use this for like anything that has to do with eggs. Uh, some people also use to like it with fish, something that's quite fragile. I think sometimes it tends to dry ingredients a little bit, but it's really great for the things that really sticks a lot. Uh, but eggs for me, anything like omelette or tortillas, potatoes with eggs, anything that does eggs, I love to use a non-stick pan. But there's a lot of health concern about the, the coating and I'm not usually a fan uh, of these ones. But anyway, that's one of them. Uh, the next one that you can use as well is this one, uh, which has uh, been used quite a lot of time. And this is the iron pound. This is the actual ancestor, you wouldn't know, maybe, of this. You see? These two pans are actually the same pans. This is the modern version that, no, that doesn't stick, but back in the days, this one that I've got here, and that black metal, was actually uh, the one that was uh, used. And when there's a lot of oil and you keep on frying, because most it's a frying pan, you have a coating that becomes a bit non-stick. Now, the iron pan is a pan that uh, goes high in temperature very quickly. It's very thin. So you can fry or flash fry things very quickly when you want to cook or sizzle something. Uh, but it's not at all used for this kind of long cooking. You can't use it with any acidic product like tomato sauce or things like that. So again, it's a very particular type of pan. But you know, when you improve your cooking skills, it's a good thing to have. So that's just an example. These are just examples of what you'll find and don't get stuck on these. Uh, another one that's got a non-stick coating, as you can see, look at that. This is what we called in French cooking, one of the many specialty pans. And this is a crepe pan. To make crepes, and it's been custom designed just for one purpose only, is to make crepes. And it's thin, it's got the edge, you can use it, you can flip and it's non-stick. Again, when you do something like batter, another example, you want to have non-stick. So sometimes to have a specialty pan in your kitchen, again, when you reach certain levels, it's also quite useful. And this is the thing I've been using for the course of these three years to make my video. This one, uh, the cast iron pan. So this one, uh, the good thing, it's a whole big thick uh, piece of metal. Uh, it takes some time to go into temperature. When it starts to get really hot, it really keeps the temperature. You can actually use it for stews. You can even use it to make like, uh, like cakes and like I did a tartatin with that one. You can put it in the oven. It can hold like extreme temperatures. And it's also not too much of a, you know, of a one that you want to use with acidic product because you could tend to have some metal uh, kind of taste in there. But it's got a lot of use, even though I haven't been using it too much, uh, but it's one of those cheap pans or get a bit of an ancestor that will use a lot. It's sturdy, it's never gonna break, it's like the workhorse in the kitchen if you want to use it, but it's heavy. It's heavy. You could actually kill someone. Bring my parcel in time, postman. Uh, so that's another one. Okay, and finally, yes, that's the one you all know. It is the stainless steel uh, pan. This is a good quality one, you know, it's one piece of metal, just a uh, whole forge together. Uh, the, the Bayer brand, if you wonder, but the brand I'm using. And it's a very good quality uh, stainless steel pan. And the diameter is usually, I'm using 24 centimeters. It is the average for home. You can buy 28, 28 centimeters, which is about like 10 to 11 inches. It's a bit big. So 24 centimeters or 20, 22 is a bit small. 24 is the sweet spot for me for two to four people when you cook. Now, that's a brief overview, very brief overview about what you can have when you start cooking and when you cook and stuff like that. And already you must be saying, you know, oh my God, like all these pans are things, you know, this is a bit overwhelming. And I just wanted to show you this to tell you that yes, 
there are options out there, but in my experience, throughout the time that I've been cooking, is it really necessary when you start to have all of these things? And the answer is no, you don't. You absolutely don't need to have these pans if you don't want to. The first pan that you need to have and you should use when you begin, don't go and invest too much money, but just buy one good quality stainless steel pan. Because that thing is gonna do everything you want when you start. Huh? You can pan fry things, you can flash fry, you can make anything with tomato sauce, any kind of sauce, any preparation can be done, steaks, fish or whatever. You can do this with a simple stainless steel pan and I would not go and start buying zillions of things in your kitchen and clutter your kitchen with all this stuff when you begin. Absolutely not. Keep it simple. That's my advice when it comes to pots and pans. Keep it, keep it very simple. Worst case, I would buy two pans, you know? A good size stainless steel and a good size non-stick that you can use for omelette or if you really have something that's gonna like fish or that's fragile but these two pan a non-stick for certain occasion and a stainless steel now this is my advice if you are a, an absolute beginner and you want to start without too much budget because this is how i started but that's my opinion let's move on on like uh, the more like saucepans and stuff and now let's move on to the saucepan so i've got in front of me just one one saucepan, they come of course in many sizes, you know them, I'm sure you've got them at home. But when you start French cooking, let's say, let's imagine you don't have anything, um, you don't need again to go and buy tons of pans. So again, keep to stainless steel when you start. And my advice, you know, you can get away with two or three, so I just wash this bit of water, two or three pans. But you know what, these large one, nine inches, uh, this one is actually 9 inches, which is 23 centimeters. So again, the 24 centimeters, which is between you know, 9.5 inches in diameter, is absolutely great because it can do small things like small quantity and it can also do big quantities. And I've been using this more and more actually when I'm making things like pastry cream, you know, and, and anything you want to cook into it, you can even make little stews, you can, you know, you can make pasta, boil rice, do whatever. It's really a workhorse. So instead of having all these little medium-sized pan, mini pan and things like that, just get a small one for the very small quantity, maybe a medium size, and then go straight to that kind of size. And you will see, that is really for me in French cooking, basic stainless steel, always with the sandwich bottom, the thick bottom of the pan, very important. Uh, it was, you know, prevent things to burn too much. And this is a De Bayer uh, brand, by the way. You can find all kinds of brands, um, but the De Bayer is a French brand. Uh, you know, mostly you can find them in France for the, for the good ones. Uh, that's where I got this one from. Um, but it doesn't matter, you know. Just get some two or three pans maximum, that's fine. Moving on, we've got, uh, again, the specialty pan when it comes to sauce pan. Now, this is called the Saucier. I think in English, the saucier pan or uh, the rounded saute pan. Now that is one of my favorite, that's how it looks. This is one of my favorite pan ever. When you start, when you make sauces, it's gonna get the sandwich bottom, it's still the buyer, the brand, huh? it's got that sandwich bottom here uh, and you see the sides of the pan, I don't know if you can really see on the side, and it's not straight. It's got that kind of conical, slight conical shape. So when you whisk like this and you make sauces, any sauce to be made in this is absolutely easy. It renders things easy, easy, easy. Strongly advise the saucier pan is one of the things, even when you start, if you can, get this. Next, the stock pot. This is a mini stock pot. Uh, you can buy larger ones. This is to make the big stews and everything like that. Ideally, uh, for me, if you want to buy stock pot, on the cheap price again, keep to stainless steel. But when it comes to stew, something I haven't showed you, maybe I can show you here, so I'll, I'll dig in my stash of pans, is this one. Now this is a cast iron, Le Creuset, 
uh, Dutch oven or whatever it's called. Now this has been my saver, my workhorse. I've used it a zillion times to make everything. It's beautiful. This is when cast iron with enamel finish really comes to shine because you got the beautiful non-stick. It goes in the oven. You can make stews, you can fry stuff, you can slow cook, you can do anything. Ideally for me, if I go stock pot, I think, you know what? Buy one Le Creuset, it's expensive. I've, I've got this thing for like four years, it hasn't moved. Beautiful. When it comes to the stainless steel though, the reason I get this mini stock pot, because that is the equivalent of what we call in France the sauté pan. The sauté pan, which I didn't even find in Australia, like the basic stainless steel sauté pan is exactly like that. The straight side like this, it's kind of high, but usually it's got a handle like this and it will look something like that when you bite. And the sauté pan, honestly, in France is the most widely used equipment and it's beautiful because that stock spot, you know, even though it doesn't have a handle, I'm using this to do everything. I can cook steak, I can make paper steak, I can make mini stews, I can make soups, I can make stock, I can make anything I want. Again, sandwich bottom. But it's not huge. You can see, look, it's a, it's a tiny one. I love it. This one is 23, 9 inches in diameter. And its height is what? We're talking about 4 inches high. You know, 10 centimeters high. Mini stock pot. If you can get one of those, beautiful when you start. But basically, that's it for the pans. That's my recommendation. In no way this is the gospel truth of pans. I'm not pretending to have the knowledge or whatever. These are just my personal tips of what I've learned on that channel and what I think has been really useful for me and what really works. But that's it for the video, guys. Join me next for the chapters on knives and utensils.